Alcon Panoptix Trifocal Eyewell, a deep review. What do you have to know about new to United States but well known to Europe, Alcon Panoptix Trifocal Eyewell? Hi there! My name is Alex and you are at Eye Surgery Explained channel. In theory, any eyewell should restore your vision to the best possible standard. However, there is no ideal eyewell available in the world. Therefore, while choosing an intraocular lens to restore your vision if you have a cataract or if you are planning a refractive lens exchange, you have to be well informed about weak and strong parts of the eye wall you select in order to achieve the best possible vision for your individual lifestyle. So, let's dig deeper into Alcon Panoptic specifications and let's find out is the eye wall suitable for your individual lifestyle or not. Any eye wall has a standard set of specifications printed at its datasheet. However, knowing the specs are not enough to understand the full behavior of eye wall. So let me explain why and what exactly you have to know. Actually, in order to understand what exactly you have to expect from different IOL types, you have to know two groups of characteristics. The first one is a quantity of vision and another group of characteristics is a quality of vision. So let's start with Panoptic's specifications and then we go to the quantity and quality of vision questions. To check all the Panoptic specifications, I decided to take an FDA datasheet. Let's have a look. So, what we can see here? Here you can find about 10 parameters of the lens, all the information are more or less technical and have no specific impact on your quality of vision. However, some parameters are quite important and I will explain you why. Single piece IOL with diffractive aspheric optic. The most important here is asphericity type. Is it spherical or aspheric optics? Spherical IOLs tend to have less quality of vision, especially in dim light conditions, while aspheric optic has a better quality. But there are different asphericity type available. It is so-called zero asphericity and negative asphericity, and negative asphericity has a different degree of asphericity. Generally, if we are talking about average cornea, the more negative asphericity we have, the sharper and brighter image in terms of contrast we will have on the retina. It is not published here, but I can tell you that Alcon Panoptic has an average amount of negative asphericity. Add power, especially at cornea plane, will give you an information about estimate point of the sharpest vision for near and intermediate vision. However, as I explained you in my previous video about multifocal IOLs and glasses, please have a look to the link in this corner and in the description below to that video. And as I explained in that video, the most important parameter is the defocus curve and actual lens position, and I will talk about that later in this video. So, at power in specification just give you a basic idea about IOL type, is it bifocal or trifocal, and a position for best possible vision for near and intermediate tasks. And next important parameter here is an absence or presence of optical light filter. As you can see here, Alcon Panoptics has a blue light filter. It means that this IOL has a yellow color and it will definitely change your color perception. Despite you will definitely nearly adapt to this color change, if you are working with the colors and you need exactly precise color reproduction, please be careful in selecting this eye well, because it will definitely change your color perception for the whole color range. There is no miracles and you cannot cheat physics. It has a visible light filter which cuts certain wavelengths, and it means that the whole color pattern will be slightly changed. If you will read this document further or you will have a look at the Panoptics website, you will see that Alcon declares that their optical filter has the same characteristics of a natural crystalline lens of a human of 4 to 43 years old. It is not exactly true because our young natural crystalline lens is absolutely transparent and clear. And just with aging process, some natural lenses became to change each color to a little bit yellowish color. Moreover, it's well known that visible light spectrum on a human eye begins at 400 nanometers till 700. And now let's have a look at Alcon Panoptic's vision quantity and let's investigate its defocus curve. As I've already explained, analysis of defocus curve is not an easy task because we never know how this defocus curve was measured. So, first of all, let's have a look at Alcon's official website. As you can see here, this defocus curve gives a quite promising result. It is more than 2020 in distance, it is 2020 in near and 2025 at intermediate distance. However, if you look precisely, you will see that the best near point is located at 50 cm, which is not exactly near. It is somewhere in between near and intermediate range. Well, looks promising, but what you have to know that it is not possible to achieve this kind of high quality results in real world conditions. I will explain you why it is happening a little bit later in this video, but now let's find out a real defocus curve and real results which you can expect from this kind of IOL. And to find out, let's try to find other sources of defocus curve for Alcon Panoptics. Let's have a look to a large publication in the The Ophthalmologist Medical Journal. As you can see here in one page, it is the highest level of visual acuity more than 2020 in both near and far. 
However, if you continue reading this publication, you will find another defocus curve, and here you can see a more realistic results, which gives us about 2020 at far and less than 2020 and intermediate and near. If you will try to dig deeper, you will find tons of different defocus curves which are either better or worse than which I am displayed to you. It happens because there is no standard way of measuring defocus curve, and therefore measuring techniques gives you different results. What is important for you to know is that any trifocal multifocal IOL theoretically really can give you this type of results, but in absolutely ideal conditions. It means that your coordinate is in ideal state, it means that your IOL power calculated in absolutely perfectly and the lens is placed in absolutely exact position as it expected. And the most important is that the measurement taken in an extremely bright light in a high contrast environment. But in real world you never meet this type of environment. And therefore an average vision you might expect with trifocal IOL looks like this. It means you might achieve about 2020 at far, you might achieve about 2032 at intermediate and you may achieve something between 2025 to 2030 at near. This type of performance of trifocal IOL is a way better than well-known bifocal because you have a better intermediate range. However, you should not expect 2020 at all the distances and uninterrupted, because nature of multifocal trifocal IOL is that it has three distant focal points. One is for far, one is for intermediate and one is for near. And dependent on IOL types, you will definitely have a small reduction in visual quality between the focal points. It is nature of the lens, it's not a problem of the lens, it's not a bad lens, but it is simply technology of lens you should know. What other important factors you have to know about multifocal IOLs? We talked about quantity of vision and let's talk about quality of vision. Quality of vision means color perception, which I already explained, but it also means contrast sensitivity, long-term stability and tolerance to residual refractive error or residual astigmatism. Let's have a look what does it mean. As you may already know from my previous video, Quality of vision with a multifocal IOL slightly degrade, I mean in terms of contrast sensitivity, because of nature of the lens. I explained why it is happening in my previous video, where I explained the difference between multifocal or EDUF type of lenses. Please check a link to this video in this corner and in the description below. While contrast sensitivity describes generally the quality of your vision, it directly impacts the quantity of your vision as well. The defocus curve I've described relates to bright light conditions. But when illumination will decrease, your pupil size will change and it will change the behavior of your lens. As you can see in this drawing of FDA Panoptics datasheet, when your pupil size increases, the lens delivers less light energy to near and intermediate focal point and distributes more light energy to far focal point. It means that in dim light conditions, your visual acuity at near and intermediate will be reduced. And in this case, to be able to read without glasses with panoptics, you have only two solutions. One is to increase the amount of light, or another is to use the reading glasses. Your vision quality in this case will degrade by design of the lens. If you will have a look to that picture, it has a contrast sensitivity curve of the panoptics in a bright light conditions. The gray area here describes the normal range of contrast sensitivity. And as you can see here, in bright light conditions, panoptics performs fairly well. It is well inside of normal zone. However, if you will have a look at the same measurement and dim light conditions, you may notice that panoptics quality of vision degrades and contrast sensitivity drops below the normal threshold. I am not saying that panoptic is a great lens and I am not saying that panoptic is a bad lens. I just want to explain you what you might expect in different light conditions and different lifestyle environment in order to help you not to be surprised by your vision quality in some circumstances. There are some physical limitations of different technologies and there is no perfect IOL available. So you have to know what type of IOL will provide you with a different vision type in order to understand what exactly IOL you have to select for the best visual performance in your particular case. And in my next videos I am going to do a detailed review of Technique Symphony and Alconduity lenses which I made on EDUF technology and you will see more differences in technologies between different IOLs in more detailed reviews. So let's go on and let's talk about other important characteristics of an IOLs. Another important point you have to bear in mind is that nighttime dysphotopsias. As you may know, any presbyopia correcting lenses are associated with nighttime dysphotopsias. I will not talk too much about Alcon Panoptics and nighttime dysphotopsias because I have a dedicated video related to that issue. Please check a link in this corner and in the description below about nighttime dysphotopsias with different IOL types. And now I'm gonna talk about one specific issue, so called glistening, related to Alcon Arcosoft platform at all. What is glistening? It is a small changes in IOL materials over time. It is appearance of small vacuoles in, uh, inside of the lens, which might have a different impact of different patient's vision. 
As you may know, there are two different types of IOL materials, so-called hydrophilic and so-called hydrophobic materials. While some hydrophilic materials are associated with higher level of secondary cataract, some types of hydrophobic materials are associated with glistenings. And glistening issue might be related to Alcon panoptics as well, because it is made from the same material as ordinary Alcon Acrisov or Acrisov Restore well known to the United States. Actually, glistening is not a big problem with Alcon Acrisov materials. However, you have to know that it might happen time to time. Some patients may have a lot of glistening in their eye, but their vision is not impaired. However, some other patients with glistening may feel some disturbances due to this issue. Generally, if you are not satisfied with your vision with Alcon panoptics or other type of multifocal lenses, there are just few reasons. It might be a problem with your cornea surface. You may have a dry eye or irregular astigmatism or other eye diseases. You might have a residual refractive error in terms of sphere or in terms of cylinder or re residual astigmatism. Another reason you might have some problems with your retina, which reduces the quality of your vision and particularly reduces the contrast sensitivity of your eye. It means if you have a reduced contrast sensitivity of your eye in, at the retina, plus if you add a multifocal AOL which reduces the contrast sensitivity, your image quality will be not as good as you might expect it, and you will be not happy with your image quality at all. And the last problem is so-called neuroadaptation. Actually, your brain has to adapt to a new type of image formation on the retina. The multifocality is an unnatural way of image formation, and our brain has to adapt to distinguish between sharp and unsharp image and to focus on exactly what you want to see. And for some patients, this problem takes a few weeks, for some patients it takes several months, and some patients never adapt. But to be honest with you, it happens quite rarely. So, if you have some problems with your eye, please don't hesitate to consult with your doctor and try to find out the reason why your vision quality is not as good as you might expect it. Generally, Alcon Panoptics is a good lens, which will give you good vision quality and spectacles freedom, but if you will understand all the drawbacks and all the specific of the technology. I would be happy if you will share your experience with Alcon Panoptics in the comments to this video. Also, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me in the comments below, and I will try to help you to understand this topic better to the best of my knowledge. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and see you in the next video. Bye.